If you're a big Wes Anderson fan and you celebrate his entire body of work, the entire collection, go out, watch Asteroid City, have yourself a great time. You don't need to hear from me about it. Now, if you are someone that's on the fence, maybe you liked Royal Tenenbaums, maybe you liked The Life Aquatic or Rushmore, I'm a big fan of Rushmore myself, but you're not fully invested. You want to like his stuff more but you're disappointed every single time. Well, now you and I maybe have something more in common because that's where I'm at with the guy. I saw Asteroid City, I gave it a chance, and I'm gonna give you my review on it, spoiler free. Please join me. Full disclosure, I was gonna do this review in the style of a Wes Anderson film, meaning like hold up a microphone and just awkwardly stand here and talk once in a while, do artsy shots, different camera angles, and then I realized YouTube doesn't pay me enough for that crap. So we're gonna do by the books basic stuff. And that's the opposite of what I love about Wes Anderson. He's not formulaic. He does things his way. And his way seems to get quirkier and more off the wall every single time. You're gonna hear critics use words like irreverent, wondrous, wildly different, full-blown Wes Anderson. And these are all words for sure. And I would say, yeah, they do make sense here. Because Asteroid City is full-on, headstrong Wes Anderson for better and, in my case, worse. Let's start with the pros. As always, stellar cast. You have Tom Hanks. You have Scarlett Johansson, Scar Jo for short, as I call her, and I think people started saying that after I did. Jason Schwartzman, Brian Cranston, Edward Norton, Maya Hawk, I guess, for, for the kids. And a bunch of others I didn't even notice in the trailer and won't say in case you want to go out and see this and not have those reveals spoiled. A lot of, lot of good actors showing up. And they all have quirky, cutesy tendencies and speak and act the same way. It's fun and a little bit tiring after a while. Asteroid City is an hour and 44 minutes long. It feels closer to two and a half hours. This thing does not move fast. It takes its time. It slowly builds. It also presents itself in play structure. Meaning, we have a movie inside of a movie here, folks. And that alone is gonna turn off a huge swath of general audience goers. In fact, I saw this movie solo, because no one else would go with me to a Wes Anderson film. And I was one of maybe 15 people in the theater Two couples, they left, they walked out halfway through this film. It's like they read each other's minds and decided, let's get up and leave at the same time. D totally different sides of the theater. They just never came back. And as I was watching and it was closing in around the hour 20 mark, I was thinking to myself, I could leave and like not care at all. <laughs> like, the story is not the type that's really pulling you in. We don't have a Shawshank Redemption here or a seven or something that's really profound and impactful and heartbreaking and all those other emotions. This is just quirky. It's quirky through and through. Now there is a topic, there is subject matter. Um, it's a little abstract and the movie acknowledges the abstractness of it. Abstractness, is that a word? Yeah, well, it doesn't, it's Wes Anderson, we'll make it one. But it doesn't really bother going into anything particularly. It's more just, these are some different types of people that all have their own struggles and baggage and they're all trying to find their purpose and maybe they will in Asteroid City, or maybe they won't, or maybe it's all irrelevant, who cares? That's the message. Visually speaking, this movie's stunning. It takes place in the 1950s. The location's very fun, and Wes Anderson knows this. He loves what he made, and he takes the time to show us every little nook and cranny, and the opening is really terrific. I thought, man, we are in for something special. And as it kept going, I thought, man, this was special at one point, and now it's kind of losing me, until the ending when I inevitably was like, Bummer. But he's doing some really great panning and dolly shots constantly in this thing, going from the repair shop to the little cafe. The location, if it wasn't obvious, is Asteroid City. That's the name of this little, small, rinky-dink town in the middle of nowhere, in a desert, where an asteroid came down, caused a big crater in the ground. Wes Anderson's also having fun with different aspect ratios. He's having fun with black and white, and then to color. I mean, the whole thing feels like it's shot inside of a Roadrunner cartoon as well. The colors are very poppy. You got the desert, of course. The motif is all there. I don't know. It just, something was amiss for me. And I think it's the fact that it's so herky-jerky. There's no compelling narrative. There's no through line, really, to this thing. It's different acts of a play. It's showing the struggles of actors. 
it's stuff we've all seen a bunch of times before, but then it's jumbled together in this little potluck. And while some of the food provided was very tasty, the overall meal, not that great. All right, well, those are my thoughts on Asteroid City. I'd love to hear from you. You a big Wes Anderson fan? You looking forward to this one? Maybe you already saw it. Let me know in the comments below. Please like the video if you got something out of this. And if you got more than one thing out of it, maybe think about subscribing as I post tons of movie content each and every week. I'd love to have you stick around. And hopefully, if you do decide to subscribe, you'll come back and I can talk to you some more in another video. That would be wonderful.